the two best times to be governor, by the way, um, and this is a, should be a point of emphasis for the people who are trying to do it now, the two very best times are when you first get in and when you're about to get out. Um, the middle can be sketchy. Yeah, he's one of the most unpopular governors in New Jersey history, according to the polls, but Chris Christie still draws a crowd wherever he appears, and such was the case today in Livingston, where he was making an announcement about an expansion of the state's prescription monitoring program. This database is used to identify and successfully prosecute health care professionals associated with pill mills that dispense narcotics without a legitimate medical purpose. Today I'm pleased to announce that five more states are joining this proven life-saving network and are now actively data sharing information with us. Pennsylvania, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire and West Virginia bringing the network to 12 total states. The governor also announced that the state health department will allow for expanded patient history searches so doctors can get a deeper read of a patient's potential for addiction. But as is often the case with Christie appearances, the governor came ready to answer questions unrelated to the subject at hand. Hey guys, I'm kind of rushed so I can take a couple and that's it. So. In this case, the president's new pick for FBI director. Christopher Ray is the gold standard and the president deserves extraordinary credit for going through a really deliberative process um, and coming to the conclusion of picking not a politician, but a law enforcement professional who has the respect in both sides of the aisle. When I had to retain legal counsel during a very, very troubling, confusing, difficult time for me, I made one phone call, and that was to Chris Ray. So, I can't give a better recommendation than that. The Yale grad was Christie's personal attorney during the GWB lane closure scandal and was a prosecutor in the Bush 43 administration. Christie again refused to say what kind of recommendation he had made to the president, but was happy to talk about the upcoming governor's race on the day after he said he had voted for Kim Guadano. Did you talk to President Trump and say, this is a guy at least you should interview? Why, after the answer I gave you before, why, know, Anthony, why do you think I would answer that? Are we overhyping? Are we overhyping the importance of this gubernatorial election because it's the only one along with Virginia? Maybe. Well, sure, you always do. You always overhype it because there's only two races, and there's New Jersey and Virginia, and and I, you know, my guess is that you'll continue to overhype it, but that's okay. I mean, I, is the, it worthy of the hype? Sure, I think the governorship of New Jersey is worthy of the hype. I do. Is the election? Well, we don't know yet. We, we, we listen. These guys have been the nominees for you know less than what, less than 24 hours, so they're going to have to. Campaigns are determined by the candidates, and the level of excitement that occurs, and and uh, the level of newsworthiness that occurs, depends upon the candidates, their ideas, and how they present themselves. It was clear, though, that the governor is thinking about his place in history. I'm the only person in the history of the state that's been U.S. attorney and governor and held those for 16 consecutive years. I mean, I do feel a little bit old. I mean, I got sworn in as U.S. attorney, I was 39 years old. The governor said today that he's old news, but given the size of the audience inside and the size of the gaggle outside afterwards, Chris Christie remains the biggest political attraction in New Jersey, at least for now. In Livingston, I'm David Cruz, NJTV News.